to the Developing Writers Group. Um, this week we're going to be doing an informative about ponds, and I know that you read the book Life in a Pond and also watched the video A Pond is a Habitat. So this is the graphic organizer that I did. You should have seen a photo of it in the previous lesson, um, but we'll just quickly go over it. Ponds, and I just again wrote the facts that I learned about ponds in note form. These are not complete sentences. It's just a way for me to get all my ideas on paper before I go to write the piece. So starting here, it said ponds, um, in ponds, the sunlight reaches the bottom of the pond. It has plankton, which is tiny plants and animals, and this can be food for other animals. There's a lot of animals that live in the pond, like fish, some of them are called bass or perch. There's crayfish, turtles, frogs, snails, snakes, um, insects like dragonflies or water striders, and those were the ones that walked on the surface. <coughs> Excuse me. Ducks, geese, beavers, egrets, herons, those are types of birds. Some forest animals come to drink at the pond, like moose, deer, raccoons, and then there's insects like mosquitoes and centipedes. Also at the pond, um, we have beavers that cut down trees and make lodges in, their pond, in the pond. Um, we also have plants near a pond, and these are water lilies. Their roots attached to the bottom. There's plant plankton, which is very tiny plants called algae. And then there's trees around the pond, like willows or cypress. Um, and there's also cattails, which are those long fuzzy ones, um, and reeds, tall grasses, and ferns. And then after a lot of years, ponds can actually become marshes or reduce, which means become smaller in size, and even might dry up. And um, there's a food chain in the pond, so the small animals are food for the larger ones, and that's kind of like within any habitat. Um, over here it says ponds are small, shallow bodies of water, and the waste material from dead plants and animals can sink to the bottom, and then um, it will build up over time, and that kind of also makes the pond more shallow. A pond has calm, still water, and it has muddy soil. Um, the ground soaks up the water like a sponge around it. And then I'm always going to try to find a book about the topic, but a different book, one that you didn't have at home, but maybe you can always do research on the computer or something, so you can look for more resources about the topic that you're doing. All right, we're now going to turn to the graphic organizer that I made. So once... Once I had my brainstorm and I figured out what facts I wanted to put, I now started organizing my piece of writing with a graphic organizer. Again, this does not need to be done in complete sentences. It's kind of like a guide to you um, to how you're going to structure your writing and organize it. What I do like to write in complete sentences is the topic sentence and the conclusion. Those are the, the um, opening sentence and the ending sentence, and it's a way to firmly know that yes, I have my piece um, that I'm gonna do, and here's what I'm gonna start with and end with. But on the inside of my graphic organizer, I put the transitions that I wanna use, but I don't necessarily write all the facts in complete sentences. I'm more just taking notes, and as I do my writing, I will then convert them or turn them into complete sentences. All right. So now I'm ready for my actual piece of writing. This is the shared piece of writing, modeled shared writing that we're going to do together. I got organized and put all my icons to show you. Um, we're going to have the stars are for the main fact, and then the circles are for the detail sentences that go with that same main fact. Um, and that's really the focus with this writing group is adding those detail sentences. You should be in this group if you already can do your very basic piece of writing and we're now looking to expand your writing and make it more interesting and really paint pictures in the reader's mind. So I already put our topic sentence and we've got our title and then it says ponds. Our topic sentence is ponds are interesting habitats with many plants and animals to discover. That's my topic sentence. That's telling the reader this informative piece is about ponds. But now I'm going to get specific and give details and the facts. So we're going to start with green, kind of like the stoplight. That's go. And I'm getting a star because that is my main fact number one. Always remembering that we're starting with capital letters, 
We're ending with correct punctuation at the end of each sentence. And please also note the placement of my letters. I know I talked about this last time, but it's really important that your tall letters like T's and D's and capital letters are tall and they go to the headline, whereas short letters such as A and R and E, um, S, and they are, they're short letters and they go between the belt line, which is the middle line, and the foot line. And then there are letters that hang down like Y's and P's and G's, and they do need to hang down. And also those letters begin in the lower part of the line and hang below the line. So just keep an eye out on the letters as I write them. All right, I'm going to now use my graphic organizer as a tool. So don't put this away after you've done it. This is a tool for you as you do your writing. Ponds are interesting habitats with many plants and animals to discover. And now I'm going to my graphic organizer, and there is my first transition. It says, first of all, so put my capital F. Yes, you should have your sight word list available for you. First of all, okay. And again, I'm looking over here. I'm going to give general information about a pond. I want to talk about that there are shallow bodies of water. The sunlight can go to the bottom. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be writing first. First of all, a pond is a shallow body of water. A pond is, notice putting nice spaces, a, a pond is a shallow, sorry if I cover the writing it sometimes, I'm trying not to. Pond is a shallow body of water. Okay. And I'm going to put a period there. That is the end of my complete sentence. I'm now going to get a green dot because I'm just going to keep giving you a little bit of general information about a pond. Um, I'm going to put it there and I'm going to write the word because. I don't have enough room to write the whole word, but I do have enough to start it. So I'm going to put it there. B and I'm going to put over here because, let's see, because it is shallow, Sunlight can reach the muddy bottom. So because it is shallow, shallow, remember to be sounding out your words, because it is shallow, comma, so I'm going to take a pause, sunlight, sunlight, as a compound word, sunlight can reach, and again, sounding out your words, reach the muddy bottom. So again, I'm just kind of adding general details about what a pond is. Um, put a period at the end of my sentence. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about a pond in general. I want to say that the pond, the water in the pond is calm and still. So the water in a pond is calm and still. And I think that is enough general information about ponds for you. So that's really my first fact. There are a couple of facts in there, but my first fact was, was just gonna give some general information. I told you what a pond is, it's a shallow body of water. My next two sentences were still details about the pond because it's shallow going to my main fact sunlight can get to the bottom I also told you it's muddy bottom so I want to describe that using an adjective kind of paint the picture in the reader's mind and then the water is um, calm and still giving you a little more information about the water in a pond because you know in an ocean the water is really wavy so this is very different um, Actually, I've got one more thing I want to tell you about ponds in general. Many ponds are filled with plankton, which is tiny plants like algae and microscopic animals that the other wildlife can eat. So I'm going to put one more general fact about ponds first. It says many ponds, capitalize many, many ponds are filled, and again, giving the reader lots of information, are filled with tiny plants, tiny 
plants, um, which are called algae. And I'm going to give that as extra information. So I'm putting it in parentheses right here. It's just a fancy word for the tiny plants, but it's called algae and it's good vocabulary that the reader can kind of learn a little bit more. And microscopic animals. And again, microscopic is a good descriptive word. That's an adjective. So if I just say animals, you don't know what size they are. But as soon as I talk about microscopic, you need a microscope to see it. So it's really telling you how tiny these animals are. Microscopic um, animals that other wildlife can eat. Animals. that other wildlife can eat. That's part of the food chain, that other wildlife can eat. I'm gonna put a period right there. All right, I'm on to my second fact, and I'm gonna get a red star. Um, let's see, I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, and here is my next transition. It says, it is amazing that, again, starting with a capital, it is amazing. I have to say something if it's amazing if I say it. It is amazing that so many animals live in or around a pond, and there are so many, so it's, it's okay. There's tons of them. It is amazing that so many and you can see I'm done with my first page, so I'm going to go ahead and stick it over here. And I have another paper underneath. So I will stick it right here. It is amazing that so many animals live in or around the pond. Animals live in or around, whoops, made a mistake, cross it out, a pond. And of course at the end we need a period, okay? And that was a red, so I'm going to change it, sorry. I'm going to put a yellow star because red was going to be my last fact and I'm going to get lots of details about animals. All right, there we go. It is amazing that so many animals live in or around a pond. Now I want to give you guys some details about the animals. All right, my detail number one. In many ponds, in many ponds, there are Frogs, turtles, ducks, and fish. So I'm giving exact examples so people can really see it with their mind. There are frogs, turtles, ducks, and fish. I want people to see all the type of animals that live there. Put a period. Let me get another detail in here about the animals at the pond. Lots of insects including dragonflies and mosquitoes. Lots of insects, comma, including, here's my examples, including dragonflies and mosquitoes, dragonflies, comma, ooh, mosquitoes, And water striders, those are those cool bugs that walk on the top of the water. Water striders live in this habitat too. Live in this habitat too. Habitat too. And I want to put a period at the end. Okay, I'm going to get another detail. And I want to tell you something really cool about water striders. In fact, water striders, in fact, there's another transition. In fact, comma, water striders, in fact, 
water striders can walk on the top of the water. Can walk on top of the water. That must be very hard to do. And top of the water. And I think that's amazing, so I'm gonna put that is amazing. And maybe my reader might think it's amazing too. That is amazing. And I'm gonna put an exclamation mark because to be able to walk on water is amazing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get another thing about animals. So I have lots of details about all the, all the animals. Remember, there was all kinds of things I wanted to say. Another example, there is another transition. I'm gonna start the word, but I don't have room to finish it. Um, other, another example, another example of an animal that lives near the pond is a beaver. Another example of an animal that lives near a pond. I'm running out of ink, so I'm going to get my other pen. Another example of an animal that lives near a pond is a beaver. Is a beaver. Put a period at the end of my complete sentence, and I'm going to tell you something about a beaver. So again, saying um, additional information, but it's still all about animals, so it's still going to be yellow. These hard workers, because they are hardworking animals, these hard workers, so I don't want to just repeat beaver, beaver, beaver. I want to say it in different ways. These hard workers, I don't need that actually. These hard workers build underwater, build underwater homes, build, and again, I'm giving you more information. Underwater, build underwater homes called lodges, called lodges, by chopping down trees with their sharp teeth, by, and again I'm trying to use good vocabulary, chopping down trees, and yes, I need one more piece of paper, by chopping down trees with their sharp teeth. There we go. With their sharp teeth. And I could have just said teeth, but I want to use adjectives to really describe so that people can visualize it in their mind. All right, I am going to add one more fact about animals. In addition, animals, other animals come. So in addition, another good transition to use. In addition, um, in addition, animals that live in the forest, animals that live in the forest, such as moose, deer, and raccoons. I'm gonna give examples here so people can see what I'm talking about. Such as moose, deer, and raccoons such as moose, deer, and raccoons come to drink, come to the pond to drink water. Come to the pond to drink water. And I'm going to put a period at the end of the sentence. I know it seems like I'm writing a lot, but I had a lot of cool facts that I learned about the pond, and I want to make sure that my reader learns as much as I learned about it. 
All right, I am on to my last main fact, and I'm gonna use the transition finally, of course, capitalized. Finally, comma, the pond has many types of plants. The pond, so I talked about animals, now I'm gonna talk about the plants. The pond has many types of plants, types of plants. That is my main fact. And if I just left it that, the reader really, really wouldn't know what type of plants are there. And that's why we get those detailed sentences. So now the reader can start to visualize what type of plants are in the pond. For instance, a great transition. For instance, comma, for instance, velvety brown cattails. And I actually grew up where there were cattails, so I know that they're velvety and brown. Put a comma between my adjectives. Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be an O. For instance, velvety brown cattails. I used to love to see the cattails because that meant spring was around the corner. Um, velvety brown cattails and tall reeds. And tall reeds grow near the water's edge. Grow near the water's edge. And I'm gonna put an apostrophe with waters because it's the waters, the body of water's edge. That's a bit challenging. We're not gonna really go into why we use it there, but um, period. Okay, I'm gonna give you one more detail sentence but, whoops, before I conclude my piece of writing. Also, and I wanna talk about lily pads, also, lily pads, so here's a transition. Also, comma, lily pads, lily pads with beautiful, there's an adjective to describe the flowers, beautiful pink and white um, flowers. Beautiful pink and white flowers. Lily pads, also lily pads, and I'm gonna put a comma here. Also lily pads with beautiful pink and white flowers, comma, pause, float on the pond surface. Float on the pond's surface. That is the top, but it's a much better word than just saying top and their roots are anchored at the bottom. And their roots are anchored. And I like that word, it really tells me they are down in the bottom, put in strong, are anchored, whoops, not anchored, E, there we go, are anchored at the bottom, at the bottom. Put a period, that is my last detail about plants. I'm now on to the conclusion. I'm gonna get my C for conclusion. I always feel happy when I write my conclusion because I'm almost dead. Now you know some interesting facts about the pond and that is a, uh, a conclusion we have really worked on all year, so you know that one. Now you know some interesting facts about the pond, some inter, Esting facts about the pond and about the pond. Three pages was perfect. The pond. That is a hang down letter, but I have no room. Now, I know you think you're done and you want to be done, but guess what? A great writer needs to go back and read what is written. So, we are gonna move over here, and we are now going to be reading with my pointer finger to make sure that it sounds correct and to make sure I didn't forget anything. And of course, later you're gonna be reading into somebody in your house. Ponds. Ponds are interesting habitats with many plants and animals to discover. First of all, a pond is a shallow body of water. Because it is shallow, sunlight can reach the muddy bottom. 
The water in a pond is calm and still. Many ponds are filled with tiny plants, algae, and microscopic animals that other wildlife can eat. It is amazing that so many, let me switch this off for a minute. It is amazing that so many animals live in or around a pond. In many ponds, there are frogs, turtles, ducks, and fish. Lots of insects, including dragonflies, mosquitoes, and water striders live in this habitat too. In fact, water striders can walk on top of the water. That is amazing. Another example of an animal that lives near a pond is a beaver. These hard workers build underwater homes called lodges by chopping down trees. I'll bring it over here. Let's find it. Oops, didn't get it. By chopping down trees. with their sharp teeth. In addition, animals that live in the forest, such as moose, deer, and raccoons, come to the pond to drink water. Finally, the pond has many types of plants. For instance, velvety brown cattails and tall reeds grow near the water's edge. Also, lily pads with beautiful pink and white flowers float on the pond's surface, and their roots are anchored at the bottom. Now you know some interesting facts about the pond. So right now you're gonna be writing your own informative piece about the pond. I'm really excited to get to hear all of your writing. And remember, be really descriptive in your writing and paint those pictures for the reader in their mind. Enjoy your writing.